Hey, good morning. It's Monday, July 27th. It's a new week. And by the end of the week, it'll be a new month. I woke this morning asking myself the question that uh, I need to ask more often, and perhaps you would be interested in asking yourself the same question. What are... What, are, what am I going to do with what God has planned for me this day and this week? That sounds like it could be a, a pretty general, vague question, but what we need to realize as God's people is God has planned specific things for us to be about. And we learn what those things are about from his word. Ephesians 2.10 says this, We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which he has planned in advance for us to do. So let's break it down a little bit. The term, you are God's workmanship, some translations will um, translate it masterpiece. Uh, others will have some, something similar to that. But the uh, Greek word is poema, and when you dig a little deeper into it, in terms of the uh, sources I've been looking at, it actually means work of art. Well, a work of art is something that is a result of a process. It's, it's a work in progress. So when you see a finished piece of artwork, a lot went into that. But what I'm looking at here is we are God's workmanship. Is an, this is an ongoing thing. God isn't finished with us yet. That's why we're still here on the planet. That's why we're still breathing. So I'm choosing to take this as an ongoing statement, an observation about my character as a person and my life. But God, I'm a work of art in progress. Again, those of you that know me say, yeah, a lot of progress needs to be made. But nonetheless, we are a work of art in progress. And that is shaped by the things that God has for us to do. So we are God's workmanship, his work of art, created in Christ Jesus. That's our hope. We're not bound by our flesh anymore. We're not bound by the simple nature. That's gone. I'm created to do by Christ to bring honor to his name in a way that I never could before. I was designed by God to do that before the fall. But since the fall, I have no hope of that. So now created in Christ Jesus, I have hope that I could be what God wants me to be and be involved in those things. And I'm to do good works which he has already prepared for me in advance. I just have to buy into it. So how do I do that? Do I get a telegram from God? Do I get a mystical feeling from God? Uh, do I wait in the mailbox for something I see in the, in, in the mail? Somebody call me up on the phone? Well, they might call you on the phone. But the way I know how to interpret all of those things is what does God call me to? How can I be obedient with my time? How can I be obedient in a way that serves others and not just serves me? See, there's so many basic questions if we just buy into the Christian life of dying to ourselves, denying our lusts and our pleasures, and seeking to do good to others. To have that soft answer, that gentle answer that turns away wrath. To be someone who really listens carefully. Someone who is careful with his or her words. So that I speak only what's helpful for building others up so that they may listen well, be encouraged, and be blessed by what I say. That's a pretty good agenda for any day. But I can continue this on through the there's responsibilities that God has given you. It, life is not random. Life is about worship and giving yourself over to God minute by minute, second by second, breath by breath. Because I only get my next breath if God gives it to me. Why is he giving it to me? So that as his work of art, I can be involved in the things that he's called me to do to make his name great to everyone that I contact. That's what I woke up with this morning. And I pray God will give me the courage to do that. 
and the wisdom and the trust in his word. And you know what? I pray that for you too. You have a great day. We'll see you tonight. Bye-bye.